Amen. It's good to see those that are here uh, this evening. Uh, we're going to have our midweek Bible study. This uh, being uh, the month of June. And uh, this uh, particular date uh, is the 20th, 2018. June 20th, 2018. Our series dealing with the kings of Israel and Judah. And uh, we are dealing with tonight's subject from 1 Samuel 25. David humbles himself unto Abigail. David humbles himself unto Abigail. And so you see 1 Samuel 25. The reason this is such an impact story is we see this great king who is ready with the power and might and strength to go out and kill all of the men which he mentions. Uh, but he humbles himself to a woman. And why is that? Because the men uh, could not convince the one who David wanted to talk to who had the authority to uh, serve and help them. Although they had served and helped his men. And so David decided you know, that all would have to die. But the woman who uh, had more understanding than this man uh, came and rescued David. From hurting himself because God would have been so displeased had he slayed these people for such an ungodly reason. As we said, we would study this particular train of thought. And the reason being that uh, we would see ourselves, see others that we know uh, and others that we will meet in the future. And know how to handle them as the different scenarios develop. Both saints and sinners are mentioned uh, in these uh, different particular lessons. And so we see... 1 Samuel 25, uh, and we understand uh, as we're saying about this story of David concerning the kings of uh, Israel and Judah. It says in verse 1, Samuel died and all the Israelites were gathered together and lamented him and buried him in his house at Ramah. And David arose and went down to the wilderness of Paran. Verse 2, and there was a man in Maon whose possessions were in Carmel. And the man was very great and had 3,000 sheep and 1,000 goats and he was shearing his sheep in Carmel. He, if you listen and see this, he has uh, almost uh, 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 you know, a good number of items uh, as Job did, but not uh, quite as much. And so therefore we see in verse 3, Now the name of the man was Nabal and the name of his wife Abigail. And he says, uh, and she was a woman of good understanding and of a beautiful countenance. But the man was churlish and evil in his doings, and he was of the house of Caleb. Now, I want to look at his name, uh, Nabal. Oh, forgive me, look at this word, churlish. 7186. 7186 is the number, it's a Hebrew word. Uh, it deals with uh, severe, various applications, hard, rough. Stiff uh, and uh, you know, uh, like a person stubborn when one is in trouble, stiff neck is some of the words that are used, grievous and so in a translation of this very same word. And so, we see we got a rough guy, and that's his name, but his wife is totally different. And one of the things is, I like the law mentioned, is she's a beautiful woman, which means just because you're beautiful, don't doesn't mean you have to be unlearned the scriptures. Or evil or wicked or horrorish or any of those things. And so we see here in uh, verse uh, number 4. David heard in the wilderness that Nabal did shear his sheep. So at this time it's payday. Uh, uh, cutting the sheep. Uh, we got bias for the wool. We're going to use it for ourselves. Uh, uh, many wonderful things are going on at this time. Uh, and David sent out ten young men. And David said unto the young men. Get you up to Carmel. And go to Nabal and greet him in my name. And thus shall ye say to him that live in liveth in prosperity. Peace be both to thee, and peace be to thine house, and peace be unto all that thou hast. And now I have heard that thou hast shearers. Now thy shepherds, which were with us, we heard them not. Neither was there aught missing unto them. And all the while they were in Carmel. Now we've got to understand... Uh, one of the things here is that uh, concerning uh, Nabal, uh, his shepherds, David is explaining to tell him, there's enough men here that we could have killed them and took all the sheep. And, that, and that's why he says we didn't hurt them. 
and uh, any other army would have did it uh, if they were not of the Lord. And so therefore, David's got around 600 men. And uh, I mean, he the, the, if you're shepherds, you're not out there to fight. You're fighting off animals. Uh, you may battle off uh, some guys who are going to steal a few sheep, try to rob you, but not an army. And so uh, he says, uh, and this, and ask thy young men, and they will show thee. So he says, you know, you can ask the shepherds. They'll tell you what we did. Wherefore, let the young men find favor in thine eyes. For we come in a good day. Give, I pray thee. Whatsoever come unto thine hand, unto thy service, and to thy son David. So he puts himself humble. That's what the lesson is about. He humbles himself. But uh, he's going to, the, the major thing is he's going to humble himself to Abigail, a woman. Whereby he was ready to kill this man and all the men that were there. And David's anger is really going to be kindled. But he presents himself as a son or uh, inferior. Although he is the actual king. And it's just a matter of time before Saul is expired. And he becomes uh, the king to the people. Uh, but the story is so prevalent. Abigail is going to explain. Everybody know you the man. And she's going to break it down. And so he says uh, that. And when David... Young men came, they spake to Nabal, according to all those words, in the name of David, and ceased. Well, why would he say in the name of David? Because David let him know, man, you ought to know, you know, I'm a good guy. I'm saw a right hand man as far as going out battling and doing things. And, and nevertheless, you know the rumor about me being the king. So, you know, my name, in my name, not in the young men name, but in my name, David says, come to them. And verse 10, and Nabal answered David's servant and said, who is David? And who is the son of Jesse? There be many servants nowadays that break away every man from his master. So he knows, okay, he's run. See, he knows the story, he run away from Saul. But he knows there is a good report of David. But remember, he's a rough guy. He's a rough neck. Bowdy, bowdy, which there's a lot of them like that in the church. And, he, and this guy is a believer but falls in the category of the sons of Bilal in this sense he acts like an unbeliever verse 11 shall I then take my bread and my water and my flesh that I have killed for my shearers and give it unto men whom I know not whence they be so David's young men turned their way and went again and came and told him all those things and David said unto his men gird ye on I see David mad but one of the things we're learning from this lesson is how we should react. When people do you dirt like this, in the sense David knows, I could have took it. But I am the Lord's anointed. Uh, I'm Saul's right hand man in the sense that I, I whoop more people than anybody else he got. And even with even Jonathan, David is greater than Jonathan. Uh, he's going to explain that actually... He is a protector of those men while out there because people will come and take your animals and, and, and bogart you, so to speak. But nevertheless, David is going to hit the anger button. And what we're learning is you can't do this because it will cause you to go beyond what your authority is before the law. So, verse 13 David said unto his men, Gird ye on every man his sword, and they girded on every man his sword. And David also girded on his sword. And that went up after David about 400 men and 200 of all about stuff. I told you about 600 people. Verse 14. But one of the young men told Abigail, Nabal's wife, saying, Behold, David sent messengers out of the wilderness to salute our master. And he railed on them. All right. But the men were very good unto us. And we were not hurt. Neither miss we anything. As long as we were serving of them and con conversing with them. He says, when we were in the fields. He, so he said, he says, we, we talked to them. As long as we was talking to them, you know, he know, man, they wasn't bothered nothing. They came out and talked to us, introduced themselves, who they are. And we know who are in the wilderness. And so in the woods, shall I speak? He says, they were a wall unto us both night and day. All the while. We were with them keeping the sheep. Now you got to understand something. You got woods. You can't see. At night it's on in your life. And so therefore he says this time, this year, when we are about to shear these animals and we've been watching, we ain't have no worries normally. You say why? Because he says 
they were a wall. There's, there's no wall that without David now being in the wilderness. I mean, in the wood. Nobody's going to come in and sneak. No enemy nation and no crooked saints. Because David and them will eat your lunch. 600 men, that's his army. And they are, he got 30 some men, about 37 men, who are his mighty men that will really eat your lunch. And so, you know, therefore, that's how it is. So they say, you know, this guy actually protected us. Verse 17. Now, therefore, know and consider what thou will do. So he tells us, you know, you got to make a decision, Abigail, for evil is determined against our master. And against all his household. For he is such a son of Bilal. That a man cannot speak to him. And so now we got a situation going. Verse 18. Then Abigail made haste. And took 200 loaves. And two bottles of wine. And five sheep ready dressed. And five measures of parched corn. And a hundred crusts of raisins. And 200 cakes of figs. And laid them on asses. It's like a truck. It's like, it's like a little truck convoy. Uh, and she said unto her servants. Go on before me. Behold I come after you. But she told not her husband neighbor. And uh, it was so. Uh, it says. Uh. As uh, it was so, as she rolled on the ass, that she came down by the covert of the hill, and behold, David and his men came down against her. And she met them. So, see, they already on their way. They fi they fixing to do what they do best, cut and kill. And he says, uh, now David had said, sure. Now look, now, now, now see, now see, as you're reading this, this is the beauty of when you read the Bible. Interjections are made by the writer uh, that the Holy Spirit keeps the information intact and he says now David said surely in vain I have kept all that this fellow had in the wilderness so that nothing was missed of all that pertained unto him and he had acquired me evil for good but wait a minute now it is the man's option David not to give you stuff but David is like man I kept this stuff because David know you know Lord, I'm here. all kind of trouble happened with these shepherds but he's, he's saying you know he should have gave me something to eat this is going beyond what's written, saints. And this is what you got to stop for a moment and, and accept in your heart. This is going into sin. Because I'm so mad. People do this all the time. People make poor decisions based on anger. Whether they're hurt. Whether someone was overlooked. Whether something was not given. It doesn't matter. But God is showing us in these lessons. I'm not going to give you a pass card. Because if he does what his heart wants to. Him and God, there's a snap between the relationship because this is like the Bathsheba incident. You're going to go take men's life that like you, respect you, but have no authority to give to these items without this evil man, Nabal, coming down hard on them. And so, therefore, he says uh, that he got his mindset. Verse 22, so and more also do God unto the enemies of David. If I leave of all that pertain to him by the morning light, any that piss it against the wall. Now see, he's not gonna kill the women, but he's gonna kill the men. Now you know, now you know, these are the same young men who he was cool with. Cause guess what? They piss against the wall. Now that's the word that and that's where we're sticking with. So the guys that have spoken well of you and have begged for your uh Gifts to be given you seek. You going to take their life? You don't think God have a problem? God got a major problem there Because the Lord says this is innocent blood. And it's not no one guy Uriah. This is like a whole bunch of people. Man when you got a thousand sheep. It take a long time to get them sheared. You got to get them sheared in a time to get your stuff to the market. Make coats. Whatever you going to do. Your storage for the winter and all that good stuff. So no 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 man. You can't go kill all these people up. Huh? You're not God. You're just the king. You're David the king, not the king Jesus. So in verse 23, And when Abigail saw David, she hasted and lighted off the ash, she jumped off the animal, and fell before David on her face, <coughs> excuse me, and <coughs> bowed herself to the ground, and fell at his feet, and said, Upon me, my Lord, upon me let this iniquity be, and let thine handmaid I pray thee, speak in thine audience, and hear the words of thine handmaid. So she said, you know, you know, uh, let the sin be on me. 
You're going to take it out on somebody. Now look what she's doing. Now she's begging for his mercy. But she's also saying, don't kill up. Now, this is a powerful woman. Don't kill all the men. Don't come and destroy everybody. And she's even speaking up for this no good husband of hers. Don't do this. Lay it on me. Let not, verse 25, my Lord, I pray thee, regard this man. I told you he was a son of Belial, of Belial, which means he is of the devil. He's a believer. He knows who God is. He's a wayward saint with a lot of money. This is just who he is. Even Nabal, for as his name is, so is he. Nabal is his name, and folly is with him. But I, thine handmaid, saw not the young men of my Lord, whom thou didst sin. Let's see what uh, the fellow name means. H5307. H5307. Uh, it, his name deals with... Wow. His name deals with to, as she said, folly. A, a dolt. Uh, it is the name of an Israelite. But the, the actual word uh, itself deals with this guy is not of a great value so to speak now one of the things is is that as uh, you see I'll try to pull up uh, some of these uh, other words uh, that it uh, can be attached to see if I can find something here I can't find a thing uh, at this point uh, to uh, link him to but uh, his name comes from uh, 5306 is the number that it deals with. And so Nabal basically is a guy that is foolish. A foolishness. Or something that is whatever you could think of. This is foolish. This is how he is. He is churlish, rough. The guy describes him as a guy who you can't even talk to. Try to talk to him. Because why? Because you know I'm run, man. You know I don't care what you say. You know, it's a lot of men escape from their master. So every man escape from his master is bad. Well, he said, well, you know, I'm not looking into it. Should I do this for everybody? But everybody not coming to you for this. This is a guy who has a good report and who has protected your men. And But they can't even tell neighbor what they told Abigail. Because the story from David's men themselves is that, you know, hey man, we didn't do nothing. You can ask your boys yourself. All you have to do is go ask these guys treat you right. But you can't talk to him. So the idea is that the only reason you see him stand there, he does know what? David is a good guy. He has heard the story of David. So you know what he's banking on in his mind? This is what a lot of people do, y'all. David not going to hurt me. That's what he's banking on. But he did not realize he had pushed the wrong button on David. And David was going to retaliate. Because David wasn't thinking level-headed. And see, this is what happens when things blow up. When things blow up, it is something has charged. Something combustible. Uh, something has been accidentally lit. Something has been done wrong. So he's banking, you know, man, you know, because, you know, these 10 young men come up here and say, hey, man, you know, when, you know, we've been here in the woods. Now, you don't know how many there, but you're going to talk like that because, you know, he's not going to do that. He's going to have to get some food some kind of other way. But see, you can't always do that. Why? Because any saint can be pushed too far. And if people don't realize to love each other, to help each other, to be there for each other, to serve each other. But see, it's a, love is a two-way street. It's not one way. This is what a lot of people don't realize. The sword of the Lord cuts going and coming. And therefore, a person has to stop and understand, just as people desire to be loved, you too must love. It can't be that you want, even with the Lord, you can't just... Have the Lord love you, love you, love you, he loves you first, but he expects love to be returned. Not that he needs it. It shows that you appreciate him, and therefore he can continue to extend grace and mercy. So now let's see how this uh, story is going to turn uh, against this particular individual, uh, Nabal. Uh, so he says here that he's angry, he's ready to take care of his business. She begs him, put the sin on me. Put the trouble on me. Uh, says, you know, uh, the thought is, is that she's going to give him a warning 
in uh, verse 26. Now therefore my Lord gives him his proper authority, proper approach, as the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, seeing the Lord hath withholden thee from coming to shed blood. Now notice this. How the Lord held it back? Because she came. So she's not saying, you know, I, I, I'm rescuing you. You about to make a fool of yourself, David. You stupid as my husband. She didn't approach that way. No, she let her know. See how the Lord has rescued you. Because she's saying the Lord is pricking her heart to come and tell him, I didn't know nothing about it. I would have gave you the food. You would have been had the food. Wouldn't have been no trouble. But she's not taking credit for mending together uh, his relationship with the Lord and keeping it. And from avenging thyself with thine own hands. See, notice this now. She's clear. She's giving him a breakdown because the Lord is with her. You're fixing to avenge yourself with your hand. That's something you haven't been doing. You've been running from Saul. You got a guy chasing you. You're letting the Lord avenge you. But now you're fixing to take things in your control. What else when you take things in your control? Always disaster. E. Ate the fruit, disaster. Adam then asked God, ate the fruit, disaster. Cain, mad, didn't go and tell God plain, I want to kill my brother. Is that okay with you? Anytime you take things into your own hands, Adam the fire, lie, both die. Anytime you take things into your own hands, Judas, the, go to the gangsters, he didn't tell the Lord, uh, you know, what if you just let them talk to you because they're going to kick me 20 pieces of silver if I turn your head. Is that alright with you? No. Because I know it's not right with you. And what happens when he tries to fix it? He goes to the gangsters which cannot help. He still doesn't go to the Lord. When you don't go to the Lord and tell him what you're going to do and then you see in this book it's not right and you act you can not think but expect disaster to hit. It doesn't matter when, but it's coming because the Lord will not let the plan be successful. Because he's judged the issue and said you're not under the duress that you think that you're under. You're not being treated in the matter you think that you are. If you remember the Grecian widows in Acts 6, what did they do? They murmured unto the people and the people came to the disciples and the disciples made a decision and it was come. If they would have just took things in their own hand and done it their own way, they brought their cause to someone that could help. And this is what saints don't do. And that's why saints' lives are always in turmoil. You know, one of the things is we have that song take it to the Lord in prayer. And that's some beautiful words in that song. And one of the things in that song says, Oh, what needless pain we bear. This is, you know, uh, you know, is there trouble anywhere? Take it to the Lord in prayer. Don't try to fix it yourself. And so therefore, uh, it says in verse 27, the writer writes, And now this blessing which thine hand made it brought upon my Lord, let it even be given unto the young men that follow my Lord. I pray thee, forgive the trespass of thine handmaid. For the Lord will certainly make my Lord a sure house. Now she feels that David, no, I know, I know, I know all about you, what's going on. So he's going to make you a sure house. Because my Lord fighteth the battles of the Lord. She know that. And evil hath not been found in thee all thy days. She know the history, the story's been told. Yet a man is risen to pursue thee. Who would that be? Saul. And see to thy soul, but the soul of my Lord shall be bound in the bundle of life with the Lord thy God and the souls of thine enemies them shall he sling out so out of the middle of a sling that girl know about David mm -hmm. and she uses a story that David know about he, he know how to sling he killed a giant, she got it I mean man, God bless her soul she got him in check and all the analogies he can relate to. And so he says, uh, the writer tells us in uh, verse 29, Yet a man uh, is rich to pursue thee, to seek thy soul. But here's a man, watch this, saints. Here's a man not looking for your life. Here's a man that's just wicked. He's foolish. Here is a guy who... Isn't even knowing you coming to kill him. He has no army. 
and you gonna kill him that's what she said but you got a guy that's after you he wants your soul but you got enough strength not to kill him see you know why because David is tired so that's, that's why we're always talking about be careful please be careful with that I'm tired I'm just tired you know why I gotta be careful with that because when you get tired like that saints you usually push the red alert burden the red alert burden what that button does now is mess you up and you in trouble and she's trying to help him now look at verse 3 it shall come to pass when the Lord shall have done to my Lord according to all the good that he has spoken concerning thee and shall have appointed the ruler over Israel she said that this shall be no grief unto thee. She said this little old thing uh, concerning you, you know, not getting the food, you know, that you want and enables disrespect and his nonsense uh, mentality. She said this won't be nothing, David. You know, you're going to be the man. What are you worried? You're not even worried about Saul and the issues that he possessed. So why would this incident be anything to you, David? So she says, nor offense of heart unto my Lord. She says here, uh, it won't be an offense unto you. It's not going to cause you to stumble. It's not going to mess up your life. You're going to have more stuff, you know, than you know what to do with. But the idea is, is this, is that you got to calm down, David. He says, uh, the writer tells us what she wrote, she spoke. Either that thou hast shed blood causeless, or that my Lord hath avenged himself. She says, uh, you haven't done anything yet. You haven't done nothing wrong. But when the Lord shall have dealt with my Lord, then remember thine handmaid. See, that's where she goes with it. She takes it to that level. She says, you know, when you, when you do get what you're supposed to get, now I want you to remember me. Because, see, she goes, you know, I want you to remember me because, you know, uh, I didn't do anything to you. I helped you. So, such is the case, David, you know, you got to uh, remember me. So, let's see what he does. Does he say, uh, witch, get out of here? You know, you know, does he say that? Thou harlot of men. I will slay thee first and then kill thy other. No. Because the why? What 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 the dude is you know how hard it is to get four hundred men together and tell two hundred y'all stay back. Because he got he got some stuff there, you know, and he's saying, you know, y'all watch the stuff. Because another nation, see, you got people watching you, they can sneak in and take the stuff. So you gotta leave two hundred back, but I got four hundred, this is enough to kill the little few men. I'm fixing to take care. And he's coming down, riding hard. He mad as hard as I'm kidding, everything that pissed against the wall. But her words are from the Lord. And what is David? A man of God. Saints, always remember, know who you're dealing with. Know who you're dealing with. When you're dealing with a child of God that's in child of God mode, your statements can reach the heart. When you're dealing with somebody who has pushed, I am son or daughter of Belial mode, they will roll off of them like water off of a duck's back. It's coming up. And so what does it say uh, here? He says, verse 32, And David said to Abigail, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, which sent thee this day to meet me. See, he's thanking God. She gave God the credit. And, 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 and you know, he's, he's thanking God. Everybody's on the same page. Verse 33. And blessed be the, thy advice, and blessed be thou, which has kept me this day from coming to shed blood and from avenging myself with my own hand. See, now saints, look at the connection. Avenging myself with my own hand. David, when he had Uriah the Hittite slain, he avenged his reputation, which about to be destroyed, with his own hand. He didn't let the Lord handle it. See, even after having done that, still, you know, you worsen the case. Did David consult, Lord, may I have Bathsheba, another man's wife? No. Why? Because I know you're going to say no. Well, see, you might say, well, brother, people usually don't tell the Lord. You know why? Because they know the Lord is going to say no. That's wrong. Uh, and so, you know, what is he doing? He is thinking spiritually. So he now gets his mind lined it up. So what makes him take you Ra's life? Okay, I got the girl pregnant. I'm going to have to live with it. What was that? Because I'm not asking that either. Because I know he's going to say, it won't help if you kill him. 
So I, I'll do another move. David is going to make these moves in his life, but when the word of God comes in from Nathan, what does he do? He adheres, he accepts it, and he knows the law. Then I've sinned against the law. He's ready to die. Nathan says, no, it's forgiven you. It's going to be a sword of joy. It's going to be trouble. So David is the kind of guy you and I want to be. That's why we love him so. For in every deed, verse 34, as the, and for in every deed as the Lord God of Israel liveth, which hath kept me back from hurting thee, except thou hast hasted and come to meet me, surely that had not been left unto Nabal by the light of the morning. And that pierced against the wall. She let him know. He let him know. I'm not going to kill y'all. I'm going to kill them. And if you had not came to preach the same thing, tell what's in my heart. Well, no man going to be left alive. So David deceived, received, forgive me, of her hand that which she had brought him and said unto her, Go up in peace to thine house. See, I have hearkened to thy voice and have accepted thy person. Look at verse 36. And Abigail uh, came to Nabal uh, and behold, he held a feast in his house. Look what it was like. Like the feast of a king. See, remember I told y'all it was payday. All that hair shame, man. You know, he finna get paid, man. We finna, we finna. He, 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 he was gonna feed his boys, but he wasn't gonna do nothing for David. And Nabal's heart was merry within him, for he was very drunken. Wherefore she told them nothing, less or more, until the morning light. Verse 37. So, son, you know, uh, you know what type of guy he is. He's feeling good. You are gonna make him real mad if he? So she calculate. I'm making real mad if he's feeling good. So you would think I felt good yesterday. While well, we made some good money, we're gonna we're gonna get paid. But remember, he's a churlish man. I'm a crook. I'm a roughneck. So you know, anytime I get news, I don't like. I'm finna handle my business. But it came to pass in the morning when the wine was gone out of Nabal. See, that's what's wrong with drinking in the sense where if you're not happy unless you're drinking, that's what's wrong with drinking. If you can't control yourself, uh. And think in your mind uh, that, you know, I'm just drinking this because it's some festive occasion. Uh, I like to drink it with dinner. But if you got to drink it to make you happy, in a sense where you're not happy that you're drinking, that's going to be trouble in life. And his wife had told him these things that his heart died. Now his heart died. Oh my. Within him, and he became as stone. Say, so you see that? It became a stone. So what does that mean? Well, what do you get from stone? Do you get speech from stone? No. Do you get love from stone? No. Do you get a hug from stone? No. You get cold hardness from stone. So remember, if I'm already a rough dude, can you imagine how he was? Them 10 days to Abigail, if he's become like stone and his heart is dead, they're going to be free yeah, so I was just noticing uh, Abigail when she went to uh, David. Uh, you got two different frequencies here, uh, two different uh, mindsets from Nabal, Abigail, and David. She is already alert on all the details mm -hmm. about David and Saul that he's chasing David down. He knows what kind of man David is. She gets the report. Mm -hmm. So she's in tune with what's happening in Israel. She's in tune. She's, she's aware. Nabal is not in tune. He's mm -hmm. not aware of the spirituality that's happening. Mm -hmm. The works, the invisible works that God is doing with his hands, with these men, with David, and how he's positioning David, mm -hmm. she's revealing unto him as she falls down before him. Mm -hmm. Abigail and David have a very similar mindset. They're in tune with God, both in tune with how right. God thinks. They discern spirituality uh, quickly. Mm -hmm. They can discern between good and evil. Mm -hmm. And she helps him spiritually and telling him that, telling uh, David this mm -hmm. to not go into Nabal and build him up on how to judge properly. Mm -hmm. And so the difference between Nabal is that a son of Bilal is that he can't catch that. He can't, he doesn't, first off, he doesn't care about it. Yeah. So he can't recognize God's invisible work that he's, that he's doing in the background. Amen. Now, all the faithful Israelites, they can, they hear these stories mm -hmm. about what Saul's doing, trying to kill David. The reports that are going out. Now, mind you, David doesn't know about Abigail. But 
Abigail is in tune with what's happening because everybody's talking, everybody's communicating. And so uh, Jesus said it at, at one point, wisdom is justified by our children. Amen. Uh, so wisdom, the, the saints could catch the thoughts of Christ, the thoughts of God, mm -hmm. and discern between good and evil, discern is it right or is it unright, Dis discern is mercy, is grace. They could weigh the balance. Yes. You know? And so this is just a, a powerful uh, chapter because even without technology, uh, the reports, God is allowing his children to get those reports and get that wisdom to, to balance and to know how to judge like him. Yes. So it's just a powerful chapter in that, uh, that teaches us how we are also to discern between That's good right. and evil. Good point. God bless you, Brother Fritz. Excellent point. Anybody else help? Come on. Man, that's beautiful. God loves it. Good breakdown. And you know, this is why we were, like I said, we were on this particular line of uh, understanding uh, simply because of the fact is that we're trying to see ourselves, see if we're in any of these characters that are here, see ourselves, if uh, the, our surroundings, others. And then we know how to handle them. Be, be a relationship, good or bad, whatever it may be, saint, spouses, children, co-workers, friends, relatives. It is irrelevant. If it stays good, then it will be because you're practicing. If it doesn't, something went wrong. If you seek forgiveness for the thing done wrong and the person won't forgive, saints of God, listen. Pick up, move far because this is what David does. Nabal's never going to really like him. And, you know, that's why Allah says just remove him. You know, this guy, he isn't uh, what he appears uh, to be. And so, therefore, you know, uh, he is removed, you know. And so, the, the thought being, uh, we've got to understand in our walk, brethren, that you have a limited time on the earth. And by having a limited time on this planet uh, that we so love... One of the things that you and I are going to have to accept in our heart is you're not always going to hit the mark on something. And your only recourse is forgiveness from God. When God forgives, seek not the trouble of what others will say or do. Because if such is the case, recognize uh, in your heart that Almighty God, if He has said it is enough then it is enough and do not harm yourselves uh, with nonsense of the devil stand by the Lord don't give up because the Lord himself is the one who will requite both good and evil to those who are good and evil though whichever the case may be and so brother Fritz has helped us tremendously as we get ready to wrap this particular lesson up and put a bow on it uh, we see that uh, Nabal now has become a stone. Came to pass in verse 38, about 10 days after that the Lord smote Nabal, that he died. Wow. Now, see, this is what a person got to understand. You know, that's why we say when you hear the word 10 days in the scripture, it may be 10 days, it may not be 10 days. It might be 10 years, 10 months, 10 weeks. It could be whatever the case may be in a man's lifetime. But it will be something that an individual can endure for a complete number that would be looked at spiritually as 10. So we see here it's a literal 10 days because he's like stone to her. Man, that's a hard man already. And then he hard dies and then he becomes like stone. Man, I'm really hard now. So God said, it is enough. She's suffering enough. Remove him. Verse 39. And when David heard that Nabal was dead, he said, Bless be the Lord, that he had pleaded the cause of my reproach from the hand of Nabal. Notice, David was going to kill them all, but God just took him. Because who's the problem? Him. And he said, And had kept his servant from evil. Remember what she said, don't avenge him with your hand. She didn't wish him dead. The Bible says she prayed and her and David prayed. Continued. No, it's just she said, let the Lord avenge you. And have kept his servant from evil for the Lord. Had returned the wickedness of Nabal upon his own head. And David sent and communed with Abigail to take her to him to wife. And when the servants of David 
were come to Abigail to Carmel, they spake unto her, saying, David, send us unto thee, to they take thee to him to wife. So he had communed with Abigail and said, you know, you know, uh, I'm going to make you my wife. So then, you know, okay. And then, uh, now this is after the man had died. And then so he sends me, okay, it's time to go get him. Uh, and it says, verse 41, and she arose and bowed herself on the face of the earth and said, Behold, let thine handmaid be a servant to wash the feet of the servants of my Lord. See, Abigail is saying, you know, I just, you know, I just want to serve, man. Just to be his wife is one of them. This is what the bride of Christ when a new member is added, should be like. You know, I just want to serve, you know. Uh, we, we, we recognize such Trevina for the great work she did and talking to uh, our new sister in Christ, Tiana Gray, and uh, telling all about Jesus, answering so many, many questions. And then she trusted that we will continue. She took off her work, and then she found her labor was not in vain because the Lord had rewarded her with a phone call from the saints saying, here it is. Your new sister in Christ. So that's a blessing. And so we understand that Abigail saying, you know, I just want to be a servant. I'm, I'm, I'm more than pleased. And Abigail hasted and arose and rode upon an ass with five damsels of hers that went after her. And she went after the messengers of David and became his wife. Wow, what a blessing. She didn't expect to do that, you know. When she said, remember I am, and she didn't, she didn't go, when my old man died, you know, I want you to hook me up. Let me be you one of your girls. No. She said, remember. Why would a person say that to the new king that hasn't took off? Because when he comes in, you know, I, I, I got my property here. You know, uh, my crazy husband here. She's thinking he's going to be alive. So, you know, don't pay us back when you get to be king. You know, just remember, you know, me. Remember me, what I did. But David, mm -mm, David blesses her even more. Verse 43, And David also took Ahinoam of Jezreel, and they were also both of them his wives. And Saul had given him Michal, his daughter, David's wife, to Faulty, the son of Laish, which was of Gainam. And see, that's, this is, we know how early it's not because he still hadn't got his wife back yet. So he's going to get all that done after Saul dies, so on and so forth. And so we see here, even as a great king with mighty powers, we recognize in our heart, he humbles himself first to send them in and didn't force to take it. But his anger being kindled, and he lost it momentarily. But when the words of the law were presented to him, he humbled himself before an even lesser person, meaning in strength a woman. She couldn't have whooped David and his army. He was fixing to kill her husband and all the men. But his humbleness is not to the female or the male. It is to God. And that's why David is a great man to this day in the scriptures and will be forevermore. And that's what you and I want to be. Uh, at this time, we want to recognize and extend an invitation that if there are any here, if any listen, that need to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for remission of sins. You have to recognize first, accept in your heart soul, mind, and strength that Jesus died was buried on the third day rose again. 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4 will validate that. It is a thing that sustains all the saints. Also, Jesus in Mark 16, 16 said, He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. He that believes not shall be damned. We see in Acts 2, 37, Peter's question, what shall we do? He says in verse 38, repent and be baptized every one of you. In the name of Jesus Christ, for the mission of sin, you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promises unto you and unto your children, and to all that are forth, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words, did he testify and encourage himself, encourage him, saying, Save yourself from this unto all which means perverted generation. Then they that glad received his word were baptized the same day, three thousand souls being added unto them, and they continued steadfast in the apostle doctrine, breaking bread and in prayer. And the Lord, the Lord, added to the church daily. Such should be saved. The fellowship, one of the key things that continue to keep in our mind and heart is to walk in the light as Christ is in the light. The fellowship is with Christ. And we can only have fellowship one with another if each of us has fellowship with Christ. First John chapter 1 will say that. We look at the thought of uh, what is our next step? One has decided to change. Uh, one must confess. Acts chapter 8. The eunuch is excited. He sees the water. What does hinder me? And sometimes I've heard a lot of guys say situations that they're dealing with with water. I don't doubt that it's difficult to get water 
where they may be at. But I, I'm not going to say it's impossible because the Lord had water in a desert. And so the idea is that men have got to understand to plan, work together, and comprehend the things that you need, if you believe that the Lord will present them, then you will have those things to carry out your work. And so, therefore, it deals with our faith and our energy and our action. And so, therefore, we see that this man is told, if you believe with all your heart, you may. So he confesses. What must he believe with all his heart? Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And then he baptizes him in water. Paul says there's a reason for this. Verse Number 13 of 1 Corinthians 12. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. Whether well, Jew or Gentile, bond or free, and have all been made to drink into one spirit. If we believe that, the Lord God will reward us, and He surely, surely, He will bless our lives. And so, therefore, if we do such things, the scriptures teach us in 1 Peter 3 21, the life figure went to even baptism does also now save us. Not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who is going into heaven. Angels, authorities, and powers are subject unto him. And if we believe that, the Lord tells us in Revelation 2 10, Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison. He thou faithful unto death. He says, I will give you everlasting life. He promises though and reminds us you're going to have a tribulation 10 days. It will be a completion of what the devil desires to do. God will give them the time to validate if we are with him. Some will fail saints because he doesn't say all who suffer this will, will not fail. Now some will fail but let it not be you and let it not be I. Before we rise up and sing the song I want to remind each other one more thing that I wanted to point out Concerning uh, this particular word, uh, Nabal, uh, I wanted uh, you to understand that I mentioned to you that uh, the word comes from another word that uh, means dope. And uh, dope is a word uh, that is archaic and past tense uh, uh, for uh, the word that deals with, uh, uh, forgive me, forgive me, forgive me. Dolt, uh, D O L T. I want to read that uh, for you. What this particular word uh, means in our language, because I want you to have a good understanding before uh, we take off. Uh, the word dolt, D O L T, means a stupid person. I want y'all to remember that, and that's why she said he was foolish. D O L T. Now that's. That's dope in the English, and this is what is translated uh, 5037. 5037. Uh, the same as 5036, which means dolt, D O O L T, a stupid person. And that's pretty bad to have a name like that, but he lived up to its expectations, and it isn't because he got the name, because there are many evil men named David on the earth today. But he lived up to his expectation. He could have shamed the word and lived righteously because Apollos is nothing to do with a holy name because that is something involved with false deities but the Apollos we knew in the scriptures preached the gospel without addition or subtraction once he was shown the truth and so we love him for that. And so if you're not here to be baptized or you're listening to this message Call the number on the screen and we will connect you with someone. We've done it before. It doesn't matter what country you're in. And we will get it done by the grace of God to His glory. But if you're here and you're a member of the church, you've gotten off track. Or you have something wounding your heart right now. Don't hold it in. Don't fix it yourself. Don't avenge yourself with your own hand. Let God see you through with it. Uh, you two can stand as together we sing Heaven's Invitation. And tenderly Jesus is calling Calling for you and for me, see on the order he's waiting.